Hi man, Rob Strong, welcome to the back of this Teardown Lab. You can see here an Atari ST, and that's because it's another Atari ST project video. So you do know, if you've watched my videos in the past, that I'm quite into these Raspberry Pis for emulation. However, I've never really got into using one for emulating an Atari ST, and I don't really fancy it because I've enjoyed having the actual old school hardware so much. So I wanted to do something with the Raspberry Pi and the Atari ST and I couldn't really figure out what it was till it hit me because I actually had to borrow this and that's an Atari ST mouse because I don't actually have a mouse of mine and then I went to look to buy one and they're kind of expensive and although I probably will try to find an original um, you know I just wanted something to get going so without sort of um, you know further thought to it I thought okay fine we'll just emulate a mouse and we'll use a microchip uh, controller or uh, Atmel or something um, but then you really soon discover that if you're going to emulate the mouse you need and uh, you want to be able to plug a standard USB mouse into the thing you need a whole uh, human interface device stack to pick that up and then if you're going to do it on a microcontroller it's actually quite a ball ache whereas one of these which really is a few quid and you know people quibble how much they cost but let's say under a fiver generally or whatever the hell you've paid for it um, contains everything you need because you've got a USB on the go that can receive the mouse and then you've got your standard GPIO um, ports just here, the bunch of pins. So that's pretty much all you need to be able to emulate a mouse uh, interface on Atari ST. So you can fit a USB port anywhere on the case, hook it into the mouse uh, zero, joystick zero port and away you go. So that's what I've done here. So I'm just going to show you my setup here. and. Uh, there's the Raspberry Pi 3, and the reason I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 is because it gives you a little bit more grunt for development work. So what I've actually got is this is running on the Wi-Fi in my uh, office, and I'm sitting over there behind me, and I'll show you that later, and actually accessing this over SSH so I can actually write the program code for this on the fly. So I did all the development on this using PuTTY, P-U-T-T-Y, on Windows and Nano, which is um, a simple text editor on here. So absolutely everything I've done here is free and open source with using nothing specialist. So in addition to the Raspberry Pi, you can see if I just pan out a little bit, I've got another bunch of other things here. And these are stuff that you might not have, but you won't need them. So I've got some scope probes connected to some of the lines here because I was sort of trying to monitor these and see what's going on on the oscilloscope. That's really handy if you're doing this kind of work, but you know, not really necessary if you're just copying something like this. I'm uh, parasitically taking the power from the GoTech I have installed in here, um, just because it was convenient power supply uh, and it's reference to the five volts inside the Atari ST. So I will be taking um, some power from the Atari ST straight for this, not via the GoTech, because I really want to use the GoTech so I can load up some software and test the mouse within games. Um, so I've got this USB adapter, you can see I'm just wiring the power just straight into the GPIO here. And I haven't really checked the pinouts, but the reason is I wanted to make sure I bypassed all of the regulation circuitry on the Raspberry Pi itself. The reason is we've got a very good 5 volts output from the Atari ST so that's already pre-regulated. I didn't want uh, too much voltage mismatch going on between these two units. The reason being, the Atari ST is a 5 volt um, system. Raspberry Pi is a 3v3. So that's fine because we're using the Raspberry Pi for outputs because we're emulating the mouse, which you can see I've relocated to here on this GoTech. Look at one of my previous videos on that. Um, so this is emulate, uh, outputting 3v3, which is fine. So we're not really bringing any 5 volt into the Raspberry Pi, which would damage it. We're actually just putting out 3v3 into the Atari ST. And fortunately, although it has a 5 volt logic inside, it will register the 3v3 as a 1. So you ought to be a little bit careful. Now, through my experimenting with this, again, make sure your power supplies are set up in similar ways here because I had a strange ground loop occur. You might have seen in one of my previous videos, I actually had to replace this. If it will ever focus, this is the sort of keyboard buffer IC because, yes, indeed, I managed to blow it out. Um, but that's fine because the keyboard, though, is surprisingly hardy. The Atari ST is built on some old school electronics, which is a bit random because I thought the computers of that era, if you just sort of breathed on them funny, they would break like the old spectrums and things. But no, this is a pretty old tough beast for um, experimenting on. Um, for a 30 year old thing, it's fantastic. So I'm just gonna turn on my scope so you can actually sort of have a quick look at what goes on on the uh, screen here. Um, and I'll show you what else is going on while I'm here. I've got the actual Raspberry Pi is connected to 
a wireless mouse receiver. And there I have my Logitech mouse. Uh, and that's pretty much, much the setup. So all I really need to do is just move the mouse and you'll see on the screen the mouse is reacting. The software is really quite clunky. It's, it's, it's a very simple C program I've written. I, I wrote it in Bash script to test it, and then I rewrote it in C to give us a little bit more performance. So any of you C coders can go on my GitHub um, account. I'll put the details down below, get the source code and make this actually amazing because uh, I really just knocked out something very, very crude. I tried to uh, um, allow for velocities and things like that in the code, but. I'm sure you guys will be able to achieve something far better than me. But you can see it just, it does work. It's as a proof of concept, it's, it's a wireless mouse on a Tatari. I mean, that's it. Using a sort of, uh, you know, three, well, it's not using the actual £3.50 Raspberry Pi because it's using the Pi 3, but, you know, there's no, nothing stopping me porting that straight across and I'll, I'll do that once I've finished all my development work. But if this is all you've got, Please feel free to go ahead and try it on your Pi Zero and let me know how you get on with that because it should just work the same. So the mouse works, the buttons work. Um, I haven't tried it with some other wired, wired mouse mice, so I'm not sure on the sort of DPI and those things. It might be a bit more stable on a non-wireless um, mouse. And then just to show you what's going on on the scope there, it's quite interesting. I've got the four channels hooked up to the scope. That represents the X plus, X minus, Y plus, Y minus. And the reason um, it does that is because you've got these sort of various um, opto choppers basically in the mouse and they emulate the uh, joystick signals. So technically on Atari SE, you could maybe move the mouse with a joystick if you were waggling it in the right way. But so if I move left, well, you're always gonna see unfortunately a combination of left and right signals because it's very hard to move a mouse uh, any other way. But just to sort of cut a story long story, uh, long story short, if you move left, you'll see one signal in front of the other. So you'll see like a, an X minus signal will arrive before the X plus, so then the microcontroller knows that's a left. If you move right, the, it'll be the opposite way around. And that's basically how it functions for all of them. So it's actually a pulse. Um, if I turn off two of the channels, so you can see it's just a standard sort of pulsing going on there. Oops, forgot to turn off that one. So if I move it one way, I'll get the yellow trace before the blue trace. And if I move it the other way, I'll get the blue trace before the yellow trace. So that's really all it's doing. It's quite simple. Um, and that's uh, more or less all you need to do. Uh, my circuit scribblings. Remember, it's still very much um, a more an, almost at an idea stage. This is a very early prototype. So I'll show you how I've hooked it up. I don't think it's necessarily the most optimal way. I haven't even researched what GPIO is multiplexed on the Raspberry Pi on the same pins, but you know, it works. So this is my desktop as promised. So I've got here the actual GitHub page, github.com front slash back office show front slash Atari Pi mouse. But if you just go to the back office show bit, you'll be able to link to the Atari Pi mouse sub page anyway. And you can see here, there's a number of files and those files really are the same files I was using on my desktop. Um, so just to show you what I had on my desktop in addition, I've got the Minibian um, installation for Raspberry Pi. That's a very kind of small, it's not really that small, but small um, operating system for the Raspberry Pi. I've got a file that contains this sort of wiring diagram. So it shows you, this is the connector that will go into the... Um, Atari ST and these are the pinouts for it and if you actually look at the DB9 connector up close you'll see the actual tiny little pin numbers anyway so you shouldn't really get stuck in terms of soldering them and what you need to do is solder onto these pins or at the Raspberry Pi end whichever end these 330 ohm resistors so that'll provide some buffering to make sure there's not too much current um, being drawn if you make a mistake so you're less likely not, not totally uh, impervious to, but less likely to blow up the Atari ST or the Raspberry Pi. So you can study that. You can see the direction here. So the Raspberry Pi is on this right-hand side um, and the Atari is on the left, effectively, in this diagram. So you can see which way the data is going. And you can see everything from the, Atari, uh, the Raspberry Pi to the Atari ST is actually buffered by a resistor. And the only thing we're taking from the Atari is actually the 5 volts supply and the ground. So remember, a Raspberry Pi can use up quite a lot, but I didn't see really anything more than 480 milliamps being drawn, which might be quite a lot really through the joystick port, but I've had it on for a few days and not noticed any problems still working in a totally self-contained way. 
there's an instructions file. Again, this one I've got on my desktop might be slightly different to the one on GitHub because I might update it slightly, but this is just general purpose instructions on once you get your Raspberry Pi image here, this mini B and where to get it from, how to log in with the keyboard. Um, <laughs> for example, I might just add, add up something here, username root password raspberry. <laughs> So now we've got uh, an update to that document. I'll actually just put that onto GitHub. Updated. So there you go. Um, now you'll get the latest one when you look in there yourself. It's that easy. So I can update things on the fly as needed. So logo.jpg, we don't need that. That's just my back office logo. Mouseio.c, if you load this up in your favorite text editor and I don't know what mine is loading up into, but it's loading up into this thing. Uh, you'll see it's a, a, a C program that's basically reading from the mouse and writing to the actual Raspberry Pi GPIO using the interface provided by Wiring Pi. They've got some extensions, which again in the instructions I show you how to load in and we're using that library here. I've just noticed looking at the code, it's a bit all over the place, and that's because I was editing the code in Nano, in the actual web browser itself. I'll show you how I did that, in the, sorry, the SSH itself on the Raspberry Pi. Um, so it's a bit of a mess, and there might be something like this where I basically made a bunch, I've got a bunch of code that does something special, and then I'm ignoring what it does because it doesn't quite work yet. So yeah, this is, remember, zero version 0 0.1, we're still sort of, you know, early days. And of course, when you connect to the Raspberry Pi, you want this diagram because it will show you where we're connecting. So just so you know, we're all along the bottom edge here. So from the sort of pins um, 37, 35, 33, 32, 38 and 40. So all along the bottom. And then just in the top right, you've got the 5 volts and ground rails. We are using those for direct power. If you want to hook directly to the joystick port, that's where you come in. So just to show you what I do, I click on putty.exe and I have my Atari Pi settings. It's already set up on the Ethernet. I did have to do that manually using um, sort of various, you know, the it's in the instructions again. I had to install the Wi-Fi driver and those things, but I got in there, it's fine. So I've got a directory here that I've made called CMouse. And what I do is I type nano mouseio.c and that's my code right there um, and you can see it's pretty terrible as an editor you don't really have any cut and paste or anything so everything's sort of hand typed and the tabbing is wrong you can see there the tab spacing isn't quite right but you could i'll just walk you through the code very briefly though we have the wiring pi stuff here just to set it all up We've got some various variables, by the way. I've been keeping track of sort of delays and velocities, and these affect how you, you know, the waveform that the thing outputs on the GPIO. You don't need to worry about that too much once you you can play with those once you're sort of tuning it. We open from the mouse device, which should be in slash dev slash input mouse zero. Um, pretty sure it's defined. There we go. It's defined right there slash dev input mouse zero. That's where the Raspberry Pi parks it. It checks if it's open, and if it's open, it just starts reading, and it's reading three bytes at a time. And once it's got its three bytes of data, it extracts from the first byte the mouse buttons left middle thing, right, and then from the next two bytes, it can extract the X and Y data. You can ignore this sort of diff X, diff Y stuff. That's my experimental stuff on code. Again, velocities and delays. Again, experimental, experimental, experimental. And over here, I've overridden them all anyway, so I'm not even looking at those. If the mouse buttons have changed, so you can see if the left button is not the same as the old left button state, then we change the pin to a low if it's one, which means you've selected it, or we raise it back up. So that's just letting you do the mouse clicks, and it's the same for the right button there. We're not using a middle button at the moment, but technically you could do some tricks, so you could make the middle button do something special if you wanted to. And what we're saying is if their Y value has moved, and this is pretty clunky, but I've tried to keep it simple to read. So when you see it, you'll understand what's going on. But what we're saying is, if the Y is in the negative direction, so it's a, it's one byte with a signed um, signed char, basically. So it's a plus or minus 127. So if, if it's not zero, we're going to check if you're moving left and right. And if you're moving left, for example, we're going to output 
um, high pins 26 and then 23 and then low 26 and then 23 if you can see that you need one pin to go high before the other that's how it knows which direction it's running in so then it will know that all the data that follows is going left and vice versa if, it's, if we're moving right we do that but in the opposite way around and then we apply that again for the X so horizontally we do the same there but with pins 25 24 and then so on so forth so please pay attention to some of the pin things if you find something weird like your mouse is going the wrong way like up and down is you know it's, it's reversed or something this is where you would go in and change it so where the look here so it says y less than zero for example if you made that to a greater than zero you'd inverse the mouse um, and the same for the xy so i hope that's of some use to you but yeah you can do the development all over the wi-fi if you want to it's a good start and if you want to help me with this project please feel free to comment down below or ping me on twitter um, you can contribute onto my github i'll put some uh, you say the diagrams somewhere they'll be in the description down below so you can see how to wire up your one and as soon as you're there yeah have a play click like and subscribe if you want to be uh, informed when more of my atari st videos um, appear please look at the playlist for this subject um, and i look forward to sort of uh, chatting with you and helping you out with this as ever, thank you for watching. I just couldn't sign off without showing you this. I've made a mod to actually attach the thing directly to the Atari ST, so I actually have the power coming through the port. I'll put the circuit diagram on with the rest of my data so you can see how to hook that up. That works great. Remember, the Raspberry Pi can draw up to, say, 500 milliamps in this configuration, so it's a little bit heavy but it does seem to be okay. So that way though, you can see there, I've got the USB port connected, which is good because then I can use my GoTech and then do, 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 load Dungeon Master. So that's really what I'm gonna be doing now for a while and that's going to be playing Dungeon Master and enjoying that.